There's a race of men that don't fit in. A race that can't stay still. So they break the hearts of kith and kin. And they roam the world at will. They range the field. And they rove the flood. And they climb the mountain's crest. Theirs is the curse of the gypsy blood. And they don't know how to rest. If they just went straight, they might go far. They are strong and brave and true. But they're always tired of the things that are. And they want the strange and new. You know, it's a strange thing doing this for my summer vacation. When I tell people about it, I think most people think I'm crazy. Why would I do it? The heat, the hills, the headwinds, the humidity, all four of the ages. Well, as I've always said, I can ride my bike anywhere. I can ride my bike anytime. But there's only one ragbri. My grandfather once told me a story. That's him as a young man in Atlantic, Iowa in 1924. Our family history in Atlantic goes back a long time, but more on that later. See, he was a U.S. Marine who fought in Guadalcanal in World War II. He was also stationed in China. During a lunch in Atlantic, he told me about a time that he left the barracks to go explore the local town. It must have been very strange for a teenager from Atlantic to go explore a small Chinese village in the 1940s. He said, We left to go see what we were going to see. And then he told me the story of exploring the town. I've thought about that phrase many times over the years. We left to go see what we were going to see. There were no expectations. They had no idea what they might encounter. They just went to go see what they were going to see. Well, Rag Ride 2024 started in Glenwood again this year. And like so many others, we arrived on Saturday afternoon. We didn't know how the week would go. We didn't know what we'd encounter. We just arrived to go see what we were going to see. Walking back here, P, and uh, it's like a little government property thing. A little cornfield back here. They got uh, they got some corn growing. They got some uh, some stuff growing. Holy shit! Fucking wild hemp plants. Colored in your head. They're all along the whole fence line. By the way, this is not somebody's stash. This is not a grow up of some sort. This is wild hemp. This is field hemp. This is all over the Midwest, and I've seen it plenty of times in the ditches on Ragbri. Watch this little snippet from a 1972 documentary. Where it used to be carefully cultivated and cross-pollinated, it is now ignored along roads, 
riverbanks, cornfields, drainage ditches, and especially next to the railroad tracks, where the first seeds were shaken from the train loads of hemp that were bound for the rope factories many years ago. Farmers try to clean this wild hemp out where it might endanger their crops. They burn it, plow it, or spray it. But it always comes back again the next year. Time to head down the hill and see what we see. I need to get some food. I need to pick up my t-shirt from Priority Bicycles. I hope to see Ryan Van Duzer while I'm down there. I met him last year at their tent in Sioux City. Spoiler alert, I ran into Ryan Van Duzer and his friends a bunch this week. But you'll see that later. But for going downtown, I have no expectations. I'm just going to see what I'm going to see. Until Team Dozer takes on Rag Ride, where we share our thoughts and you share yours to make it a great event. And so, for our last day before we start, our last tip is. No flashies, no flashies, no whammies! Ole, 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 ole! Ole, 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 ole! Ole, 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 ole! These are going down, ain't it? Oh boy, I'm in for it. <laughs> That's what hills are gonna be like. Nothing left to do but take a shower, go to bed, and wake up and ride. up a smoothie right in the morning, ready to go. Raw fresh fruit, that's how you do it. All right, 
breaking camp. There's the bike. RV camp. Found some power right there. There's a number of ways to do ragbri. I find that having a retired dad with an RV to be among the best. He used to do the ride with us. In fact, his very first ride was in 1983, back when Karis and Call were still doing the ride. But nowadays, he prefers to be the driver. Can't see anything through these foggy glasses. See, my helmet is a little askew, isn't it? And Glenwood! Oh, there's some other riders. And here it is. This is the moment. After all the training, all the logistics, all the travel, all the equipment choices, the moment you join the stream of riders, first thing in the morning on day one, it's all worth it. down through town from camp, past more and more camps, more riders join the ride, and the crowd gets thicker and thicker. Surrounded by riders who are a bit, how should we say, out of practice. Ooh. Whoa. An asshole. Coming up left. Coming up left. North Pole's that way. Yeah. Here we go. Nice foggy morning on Ragbri. First town, first day. No idea the name of the town. Figured out the name of the town, it's Silver City. Uh, Silver City, Iowa, day one. Had breakfast in camp, so not real hungry. the line for the burritos is short, then maybe I am hungry. Syrup? Oh. It's been two hours and 15 minutes since that smoothie. I'm not terribly hungry in this moment, but I know that I'm going to ride my bike all day. And I know that I really like Chris Cakes. So, here we go. Chris Cakes, breakfast number two. Now, I know, it's only day one, and it's only the first town on day one, but I already miss my kids, and I know they miss me. So I want to sit down for just a second and make a little video for my son at home. We did this tire. Yeah. We put the tire on the rim. Now Daddy's ready to go on ride. Yeah. 
Oh, I want you to come on right right with me, buddy. Yeah. This video is for Jackson. Hi, buddy. I miss you so much. Look what Dad has got. I got pancakes on rag bride. Big, huge thing of pancakes. You should see it. I'll show you the video when I get home. Breakfast at Chris Cakes. <laughs> what I didn't have was farm kids. Maybe tomorrow. Those are some good burritos. Have you never been on Rag Fry? Chris Cakes is also a good stop. And I've never been to Coffee and Nosh, but I hear good things. I don't normally let clips run this long, but I'm going to let this one valley just play all the way out, because I want you at home to see, if you weren't on this year, just how intense the hills were. First you start with a big long downhill, and then you try to keep your cadence as long as you can while you go uphill, but eventually you find yourself on a monotonous grind, trying to get up to the next crest, and when you finally get there, you see, nothing but more hills to climb. Nothing but more valleys spread out in front of you. But despite all the hard work, you're surrounded by so many other people. Any one of them could be your friend at any time. Everybody's encouraging each other to get up the hill. But even here, sweating up this hill in this moment, I have to be appreciative. Because it could be worse. I could be at work. just a video to show the sweat. That's all. Just selfie videoing to show how sweaty I am right now after getting to the top of that hill. desire that I'd get over the crest and see a water tower, see a relieving town in the distance. All I see is more hill, more valley, more pavement, for as far as the eye can see. I guess I'll have to wait on that town. My bike is a missile. Then come the hills where the tops are not seen. You gear down so low that you're crawling at seams with bikers in front and bikers behind. So close we all pedal.
reach out with bartenders and false advertising. Coming over the crest of the hill, I'm treated to an amazing view of a beautiful valley down below, spread out as far as the eye can see. I realize that here comes a big bomber of a downhill, but the elation is short-lived, because in this moment I realize two riders have collided at the bottom of the hill. I get to the bottom of the ditch and I see a woman unconscious and bleeding on the pavement. What I don't see and I find out later is there's a man in the ditch also unconscious. I'm not quite sure. I'm on Ragbri. We're at the bottom of a hill. There's a rider down. She's unconscious and bleeding. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we left Silver City uh, about seven miles ago. Do you know where we're at? We're between Silver City and um, uh, Henderson. Uh, I'm, I'm at the scene. I, I, I don't know who the rider is, but there's, there's a group gathered around. There's, there's, there's people here. I appreciate it. They got people in route. Okay. Hurry up! Hurry up! Oh, Godspeed to you, buddy. I rode away, unsure of the condition of this rider, whom I saw unconscious and bleeding on the ground. I was worried about her all week. But good news, she posted in the Ragbri Facebook group. She wrote, Carry on, riders, and catch you next year. Crashed approximately seven miles outside of Silver City. Huge heart to whomever called 911. The paramedics, the ER team. Keep posting pics and experiences as it motivates me. I'm so, so glad to see you in good health and in good spirits. Thank you for sharing. Another town, another opportunity to carb up and rehydrate. Maybe I'll even put the drone up. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Slowing right up. Patterson, stop two. Town two, day one. when I got into town. I think I waited too long here.
Slowing! By the way, this is not the gravel loop. This just happens to be part of the normal route that goes on gravel for about a mile. One interesting thing that I see on Ragbri every year that I always really enjoy is when the state troopers put up a large PA system next to their vehicle while they're out directing traffic and rock out to some music. Appreciate what you do. Sometimes they can get stuck in your head for miles. What am I going to do? There ain't no cure for the summertime blues. Sometimes I wonder what I'm going to do. There ain't no cure for the summertime blues. Come on now. Come on
pork chops gone. Pork chop junior's gone. But they're still here doing it. Glad to see you guys still doing it. I come upon Beekman's. Day one, no line. Except they were hidden behind a little ridge, and so I didn't see them until I was already past the driveway. That explains why they had no line. Hi, huh? Hello. Hey, how are you? Excellent. Good. Very much appreciate it. You too. All right. We just had a pie stop. Ready for Red Oak. Uh, ooh. Uh, let's go pie stop. Well, here we are. I can see the water tower of the end town. I'm still plenty carved up, and I'm still plenty hydrated. There's only one thing left to do. And this is the end of my footage for day one. I spent the afternoon hanging out in the water park, finding some Wi-Fi and pie over at the YMCA, and then sitting down at my laptop and editing a video. Overall, it was a great day on Ragbri. And I can't wait to go to bed so I can wake up tomorrow and do it all again. Get it. Right from the wrong, right, wrong. If 
campgrounds, RV parking in Red Oak, which is where we stayed last night, I'm getting ready to leave. Rider on, good morning. Taking the gravel route. Each new town we come upon is a new opportunity to see how they dressed up the town. Good morning! Good morning. Support the beer that supports the ride from Big Grove. No, Ben. guys
nice greenhouse. Appreciate you. Gotta support you guys. If you guys are doing that, I gotta I gotta buy something. I don't even know what I want. I just these guys are dressing up like that. I gotta support them. Exactly. Could I get a Gatorade? Yes. Would you like a blue, red, or purple? Red. Red. <laughs> Leaving my name all over the state. No. Was. Okay, they sell these at Casey's, but they're just not the same as the ones on Rag Bray. Some pretty intense stuff, dude. Great seeing you. Yeah, you too. Will Walker, right? Yeah. This guy. Up a hill. Up a hill. I'm doing 13 and he's going faster than me. That's crazy. So I see this sign that says, five miles to Lewis. Then we go around the corner, and immediately there's a sign that says, four miles to Lewis. That was a quick mile. 
right up to uh, Rumble's left! <laughs> Alright, that way's the gravel loop. I am not on a gravel bike and I don't want dust in my chain, so... I'm just gonna go good old-fashioned pavement. Ooh, look at this! Look at that fucking view! Holy shit! Uh, this is a Kodak moment. I picked the wrong camera. I pulled out the cell phone when I should have pulled out the Sony. But either way, cameras do not do this justice. This was an incredibly beautiful spot. Run her on! Right is up. That's one hell of a flag. Each town that I come to, I basically want to do three things. One, I want to eat. Two, I want to hydrate. And three, I want to relax, maybe even film a little. I also think it's important to look around and see what the locals put out for you. See what kind of activities are going on and see if there's anything fun. See if there's anything you can participate. In this particular town in Lewis, they had a dunk a firefighter contest. It actually looked like a lot of fun. You could pay some money, throw a ball, and if you hit the right spot, the firefighter would, uh, whoop, there he goes, down into the water. And it's all for charity. All right, good stop, Lewis, Iowa. Put all my stuff. All right. Phone, camera, 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 water, water, okay, 17 cameras on a bike, let's go. I'm making fun of myself here for how many cameras I brought, but realistically I did not bring 17 cameras. I'll get into how I filmed and why I filmed, as well as equipment choices, a little bit later in the week. Thank you. Alright. Oh, it's just 13 miles, right? Right, right. Famous last words. It's coming threes. Rumbles! 
Appreciate you guys. There are a number of factors that might affect a rider's quality of life on a day on Ragbri. Most of them are out of the control of the rider. Things like heat, hills, headwinds. But there are two factors that are absolutely in control of the rider that will affect the quality of life of a day on Ragbri. And those two things are hydration and feeding. If you stay well fed, if you stay well hydrated, you're generally going to have a good day on Ragbri. And the good news is that both of those factors are very easy to take care of on Ragbri. Because like I always say, I can ride my bike anywhere, I can ride my bike anytime, but there's only one Ragbri. Speeding up all these hills, I could use another stop, but we're all out of towns. Good thing for the Iowa Craft Beer Tent. Stopping! show my Ragbri bike. This is the bike I've been using for Ragbri for 12 years, something like that. This is a 2012 Trek 1.1. It's the most basic cheap road bike that they sold that year. It has 12 years of Ragbri bike bands on it. Revelate design packs, a Selly Anatomica saddle, Team water bottles, has custom built wheels with Mavic Open Pro rims, and a Shimano 105 and Altegra mixed drivetrain. for me to fly. Carved up, hydrated, excited to get to Atlantic. Let's go.
those Air Force guys sure do <clears throat> fly. Rumbles! Hidden rumbles. Right or on. on the left, car up. Coming up left. It's been a long day like that. When I get here, I know where I am. I recognize this intersection. I remember going through this exact intersection on 2019 and I'm thinking, wow, it's a lot drier today. Thank you. It had been raining pretty much this whole day. 
This All was up. one of the wettest days on Ragbri I ever experienced. Ice cold water, giant. But every now and then on Ragbri, you have some just amazing, perfect weather. 2024 is one of those years. Welcome to Atlantic. After refilling my water, I went for a nice little nostalgic cruise around Atlantic. I saw my grandparents' house on my mother's side. I saw my grandparents' house on my father's side. And then I went and I hung out in the backyard of where I was staying, set up my tent, and edited a nice little clip video. After that, I went and hung out downtown, enjoyed the sights of Atlantic, and went to bed. 85 miles tomorrow. It's gonna be a crazy one. Stay tuned.